In this tutorial, I want to present an alternative method of getting a model um, for a system from data that you have. Um, particularly, I'm interested in a toolbox in MATLAB called a system identification toolbox, which will help you um, to do that. So, the, at the start, I'm just going to outline the general philosophy behind the system identification toolbox and um, then go through an example and show you how the toolbox could be used. So the basic philosophy is that you have um, data captured from a real system, such as the red signal shown here on the right-hand side, that we have a uh, calculated a, or that we've generated a response from a transfer function, the black signal, um, and um, based on those two, you can then calculate the error between the two of them. So, for example. Here is um, the blue shaded area shown there. The idea in the system identification toolbox then is that it is going to determine the transfer function which minimizes that area, so that minimizes that difference, i.e. it determines the transfer function which gives you the closest possible uh, response to the real data that you already have. There are a number of ways of doing this. You might, I don't know, have um, seen someplace least squares optimization is, is one um, particular approach. The system identification toolbox doesn't solve all your problems. In order to use it, you need two things. You need input-output data. Okay, so you still have to determine what's a good input signal to use, apply that to your system, and get um, data from it. The system identification toolbox also needs um, for you to tell it what order transfer function it's going to estimate, i.e. is it going to be first order, is it going to be second order, um, or what. Okay, so starting on that premise that you have data and you have some idea what sort of transfer function you're going to get, um, then we can use the system identification toolbox. Uh, so you're going to open up MATLAB. Now, not every version of MATLAB has it installed. All the ones in the control um, laboratory have it, but other versions of MATLAB possibly don't have it, and the student version of MATLAB doesn't have it. So if you want to check whether your version of MATLAB has it or not, then at the MATLAB prompt you can type VR for version, um, and it'll pop down with the MATLAB version and also the toolboxes that you're licensed to use. So for example, down here you can see at the bottom, system identification toolbox um, is installed on um, my version of MATLAB. So to open the system identification toolbox, you're going to use uh, type ident, um, and that opens up a screen like this. Now I'm going to focus on a, on a fairly straightforward um, uh, example. So to start off that, we're going to load in data that you've captured from someplace. Um, so I'm going to load in that second order response that we were talking about. Um, in class, so the input was input new, this was the shifted version of it, and the output was output new, so the, uh, um, where the, the, the data was shifted to remove the initial offsets. You can give it a data name if you want, or leave it starting at sample 1. And the sampling period is 0 0.05 um, in our case. So click on import, and um, you will see the, the data set appearing here um, on the screen, and also it pops up in the middle and pops down here in the validation. If you're not sure what your sampling period is, then once you've loaded the data into MATLAB, type type one, time one, sorry, time two. The difference between those two times then is your sampling period, 0 0.05, as I said. So going back to our identification tool, then the basic um, premise then is that this is the data that we're going to work on. You can click on the time plot down here to view that data. So Y1 represents the output, or a little oscillation view is our input the step. And what I said is that the, I'm using the shifted data, so both of these are starting at time t, uh, at, at an amplitude of zero. Uh, the main thing that you want to do then is estimate the coefficients of your transfer function. So you can click on estimate, 
I'm going to choose a parametric model. There are a number of different options here, but the most reliable, simplest one is probably this OE output error. Um, and then you must specify the order of the numerator, the denominator, and the time delay. Okay, so in in this the equation is B F. Okay, so B represents the numerator, F represents the denominator, and the N B N F and N K represents then N B the numerator, the order of the numerator, N F the order of the denominator, and N K um, the um, size of the time delay. So, for example, if it was a first order system, the order of the numerator would be one, the order of the denominator would be one, and whether or not there's time delay, you, you play around with that. For a second order system, usually the numerator is order one, the denominator is two, and um, in our case, there isn't any evidence of time delay, so I'm going to leave that at one, and click on estimate. It generates a, a model. This is the response of the model up here. If you want to see how good that is, then you can click on this option, Model Output. What it'll do is it'll compare the response of this transfer function with the data that we're using for estimation down here. Okay, so this is the, uh, the comparison. The black signal is the real data that we captured from the equipment. The blue signal is the model that the system identification toolbox estimates. You can see this is quite different from um, the model that we generated in class in that it has chosen a um, slightly different damping factor, i.e. the peaks aren't matching and also the frequency is slightly different. Here it does match much better as here, this initial slope is much better than the one, for example, that we estimated by hand. Um, this over here, best fit, is a sort of a number which indicates how well the model um, that it estimated fits the data. So the larger this is, the closer this is to 100, um, the <coughs> better. That's our transfer function. It's a, a transfer function estimated. If you want to uh, export that to MATLAB, then you can um, drag the uh, response there to the LTI viewer. Not really interested in this, so this is just showing a step response of the model. Go to file up here, export, click on the transfer function uh, name that you want to export and export it to the workspace. Do you want to continue? Yes, you do. Uh, I can close this, and then go back to your MATLAB window, and in there you have the uh, transfer function output error 121. Now, one of the big differences between this and what we've used uh, used of today is this is in uh, discrete time, or in the Z transform, as opposed to the Laplace transform. So, I'm going to be talking about this in class on Tuesday. We'll have a quick review of Z transforms um, and how they relate to uh, Laplace transforms and how they might be useful and things like that. But outside of, but other than that, the tools, techniques that we've used today can still use. So, for example, we can still use our LSIM except that you put in our output error 121, our discrete time transfer function as opposed to our continuous time. But it still generates Y and we can still plot it and we can still do all the other things that we have done. Where the um, toolbox comes in really handy is then if we want to see, okay, that's a second order, it's reasonably good, if it wasn't good enough, then, you know, would a third order model give me a better um, response? And by increasing the model order there, um, we generate a new transfer function. You can look at the outputs. And you can see that, in fact, a third order transfer function gives a much, much closer fit to the real data. Um, so it's up at, like in this case, 89% uh, of the responses fitted. So it's a significant improvement. Now the point is that um, there is no simple technique to 
pull out the coefficients for a third order transfer function from that, i.e. it's very difficult to do this by hand. Um, but the system identification toolbox does it, re um, as I said, reasonably easily. All it's doing is the same, the same thing. It's looking at the error between the transfer function and the um, real data uh, and um, determining the coefficients of a model of the transfer function that minimizes that error. Um, so as far as it's concerned, it doesn't matter what order it is. You can enter any order you want. Um, so, um, so that was in, sorry. So to change the order again, just to recap, go into your parametric models um, and you can change the order in here. So the one refers to the order of the numerator and the three refers, in this case, to the order of the denominator.